and welcome to the Pittsburgh City Council regular meeting of Tuesday, February 5th. My name is Louise Chris, and with us today is John Blasco, our sign language interpreter. The following is a list of legislation to be introduced by Pittsburgh City Council. Councilman Reverend Ricky V. Burgess presents Bill 1344, resolution authorizing the mayor and the Bureau of Neighborhood Empowerment to execute relevant agreements to receive grant funding from the Benter Foundation. This funding will support the Imagination Library program for the City of Pittsburgh through the Dollywood Foundation, providing for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $250,000 for the stated purpose. Bill 1345, ordinance amending and supplementing the Pittsburgh City Code at Title II Fiscal, Article 9, Property Taxes, Chapter 267, Exemptions for Industrial and Commercial Improvements, Section 267.03, Exemption Schedule, Subsection E, to include applications filed during the period of June 30th, 2017, until legislation establishing a new program has been adopted or the program is terminated. Bill 1346, resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in the amount of $4,565 in favor of Daniel Bendez for damages to the sidewalk and driveway of his residence from a city public works high lift removing ice buildup from a PWSA water main break on January 3rd, 2018. Res er, Bill 1347, resolution providing for an agreement for payment of the city's share of the 2019 operating expenses to the Allegheny County Central Tax Collection District for tax collection. Cost not to exceed $8,065.51. Bill 1356, resolution amending resolution 863 of 2018, effective January 1st, 2019, entitled resolution adopting and approving the 2019 capital budget and the 2019 community development block grant program and the 2019 through 2024 capital improvement program by reducing Bedford dwelling choice neighborhood by $1,500,000 in increasing economic development and housing by $1,500,000. Councilman Anthony Coghill presents Bill 1348. Resolution amending Resolution 444 of 1977 in order to rename the Special Summer Food Service Trust Fund as Special Food Service Programs Trust Fund. For background purposes, note that the prior resolution, number 444 of 1977, a new trust fund was created every year a grant was issued, including 315 of 1971, 240 of 1972, 166 of 1973, 295 of 1975. Starting with resolution number 444 of 1977, the city stopped creating additional yearly funds, consolidated the older funds, and started depositing new annual grants into a single trust fund. The city's Department of Parks and Recreation now seeks to rename the Special Summer Food Trust Fund as Special Food Service Program Trust Fund in order to reflect that additional food service programming is conducted throughout the school year and not merely the summer. Bill 1349, resolution authorizing the director of the Department of Parks and Recreation and or the director of the Department of Public Safety and the director of Office and Management and Budget to enter into agreements in individual amounts of $10,000 or less with performers, instructors, artists, referees, and persons with specialized skills in connection with the department's recreational and instructional programs and special events series. 
Bill 1350, resolution providing for an agreement or agreements, lease and or license agreements for the use of certain property for senior facilities for the provision of center services to seniors in an amount not to exceed $87,010, chargeable and payable from the Senior Community Program Trust Fund in the Department of Parks and Recreation. Councilwoman Deborah L. Gross presents Bill 1351, Resolution Amending Resolution 503, approved June 27, 2000, providing for the implementation of a residential sticker parking program in the Beachview neighborhood pursuant to Chapter 549. As, amend, as to amend the streets and remove addresses included in Area T. Bill 1352, Resolution Amending Resolution 574, approved July 25, 2000, providing for the implementation of a residential sticker parking program in the Squirrel Hill neighborhood pursuant to Chapter 549 as to amend the streets and remove addresses included in Area K. Bill 1353, Ordinance Amending and Supplementing the Pittsburgh Code by creating Title 13 entitled Stormwater Management and by deleting stormwater management text from Title 10, Building Chapter 1003. Councilwoman Teresa Kale Smith presents Bill 1354, resolution vacating portion of Down Place in the 12th Ward, 9th Council District of the City of Pittsburgh. Bill 1355, resolution providing for an agreement or agreements or the use of existing agreements to set forth financial obligations and maintenance responsibilities for the project and the pedestrian facility with PennDOT, local costs associated with the work to be done on SR 0885 Boulevard of the Allies, ADA ramps and upgraded traffic signal poles being constructed and inspected by PennDOT and further providing for reimbursement to the PennDOT of the cost estimated to be $77,707.50. This concludes the reading for today, Tuesday, February 5th. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this regular meeting of Pittsburgh City Council for today, Tuesday, February the 5th, 2019. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Here. Mr. Here. Ms. Gross. Mrs. Harris. Mr. Lavelle. Here. Mr. O'Connor. Here. Mrs. Kel Smith. Ms. Strasberger. Here. Mr. Cross, President. Here. Six members present. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? And we ask that you would please remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Our first order of business will be proclamations. May I have uh, Bill? Where are you? Do you in the chamber, Mr. Urbanic? Are you here? There you are. Can I please have the Pittsburgh Film Office join us, please? Please don't be shy. Come on up. Great. Bill, you're going to make a few remarks, too. Don't you'll make remarks, I'm assuming. When we do, you have us, then I'm going to let you guys handle it, and I'll just I'll do my part to read the proclamation. 
So whereas the Pittsburgh Film Office is a nonprofit organization that promotes the city of Pittsburgh and the greater Southwest Pennsylvania region as an excellent location for movie, television, and commercial production. And whereas since its inception in 1990, the Pittsburgh Film Office has assisted with 179 feature films and television programs filmed in southwestern Pennsylvania that generated an economic impact of $1.5 billion for this region. And whereas in 2007, the Pittsburgh Film Office played an important role in supporting the Pennsylvania Film Tax Credit, a program that allows 25% tax credit to production that spent at least 60% of their production budget in the Commonwealth. And whereas in 2018, two feature films and two television series were filmed in the city and region, adding more than $130 million to this region's economy. And whereas the 19th Annual Academy Awards benefit Netflix Lights Glamour Action, sponsored by Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield, will be held on Saturday, February 23rd, 2019 at the Pennsylvanian to celebrate another outstanding year of the film industry in our region and support the mission of the Pittsburgh Film Office. And whereas the 2019 Academy Award Gala has already surpassed all previous events in net funds for the organization in its history. So now therefore be it resolved that this Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby recognize and honor the important work of the Pittsburgh Film Office and declares Saturday, February 23rd, 2019 to be Pittsburgh Film Office Day here in the City of Pittsburgh. May I have a motion to second please? So moved. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion clearly passes. Thank you very much. Okay. Please come up. Welcome. Thank you. I won't be long. Hi, everyone. I'm Melissa Hart. Some of you may remember me from public service, but um, one of the things that I'm most pleased with and proud of is my service as a board member for the Pittsburgh Film Office which is a nonprofit, so it's a non-governmental organization. But we are honored and pleased today uh, with the support recognized by the city of Pittsburgh and all the cooperation over the years as they've helped us make it snow in August, among other things, uh, so that we can support the film industry and all the men and women who work in the industry. It's not just people who make movies, it's the people who support the people who make movies, whether it's caterers, hotels, taxis, all of it. And some of you in this room may have been affected by it in a positive way. I hope so. And uh, we hope to see a lot more films here in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you once again. I want to uh, personally thank council. I'd like to thank uh, President Krauss and uh, Councilwoman Harris in, in the past for presenting the proclamation. Uh, but also for the support that uh, everybody has shown for the film tax credit. Uh, Dawn is our executive director. She's helped to bring a lot of uh, films into the city, uh, but that really skyrocketed once we got the tax credit. And just to let you know, the tax credit is, is something that uh, uh, they have to spend the money first before they get it. And it's a nomadic industry, so they're not just going to pop up any, anytime soon. So it's very important that, that we do this. Um, we'd like to see that tax credit expanded in the future, and we need to ask our governor and our state uh, legislature to do that uh, because it benefits a lot of folks, uh, a lot of normal folks, carpenters, teamsters, um, and uh, the hotel and, and, uh, and other industries within the city. Plus, the, the movies give us a, a, some sort of notoriety as well, too. So please, if you can, I'd like to see you guys all there on February 23rd, uh, and let's have some fun. Good morning. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to City Council. We really can't do what we do, especially in the city of Pittsburgh, without all of you. So thank you for your continued support. I'd also like to take one second and introduce my amazing board members that were all able to make it here this morning. Oh, they moved around. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed to do that. Shay Murtag, Lynn Vanisak, Daryl Milner, and of course you um, already heard from Congresswoman Melissa Hart. So again, just thank you for the support. Thank you for your continued support. And look for some really great projects about to be announced soon in 2019. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce.
just have the one. Yeah. And so, Councilman Lavelle, can we go with you next, then, please? Good to be seen. God bless you. Good to see you. Nice job. So if Miss Angela Mike could please come forward and if anyone else that you may have here with you. As she comes forward, I'll simply say this is now sort of a yearly proclamation that we provide. Um, I hear you. Dan. Oh, sorry. Are you brought students with you? Huh? Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So don't be shy. You can throw all this area in here, and that way we'll get you all on camera. You can come up here to help. See you guys. Okay. So as they come forward, um, I was informed that we have students from Brashear as well as Westinghouse. Those obviously in the the health careers and so please fill in. And I'll certainly let them do a better explanation of what's actually happening. But we did want to take a moment to recognize some of the phenomenal work that PPSA is doing. Whereas February 1st through 28th, 2019 has been designated Career and Technical Education Month by the Association for Career and Technical Education. Whereas profound economic and technological changes in our society are rapidly reflected in the structure and nature of work, thereby placing new and additional responsibilities on our educational system. And whereas career and technical education provides Americans with a school to careers connection and is the backbone of a strong, well-educated workforce, which fosters productivity in business and industry and contributes to America's leadership in the international marketplace. Whereas career and technical education gives high school students experience in practical, meaningful application of skills such as reading, writing, and mathematics, thus improving the quality of their education, motivating potential dropouts, and giving all students and leadership opportunities in their fields and in their communities. Whereas Pittsburgh Public Schools career and technical education programs help students to prepare for industry apprenticeships, job opportunities, and for two or four year degree programs at Pennsylvania state funded schools, community college, private schools, and trade schools. Whereas Pittsburgh Public Schools career and technical education programs are an integral part of the district's objective to ensure that all students are equipped with skills to succeed in college, career, and life. And whereas the ever-increasing cooperative efforts of career and technical educators, business, and industry stimulate the growth and vitality of our local economy and that of the entire nation by preparing graduates for career fields forecast to experience the largest and fastest growth in the next decade. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh urges all citizens to become familiar with the services and benefits offered by their community career and technical education programs and to support and participate in these programs to enhance their individual work, skills, and productivity. Be it further resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby declare February 1st through 28th, 2019 to be Career and Technical Education Month in the City of Pittsburgh. May I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Congratulations. So good morning, everyone. I'm Angela Mike. I'm the Executive Director of Career and Technical Education at Pittsburgh Public Schools. And I would like to thank uh, Councilman Daniel Lavelle for having us here today with the proclamation and also the rest of City Council um, for having us here and supporting career and tech in Pittsburgh Public Schools. Um, it's really important to spotlight career and technical education, especially with the forecast for where our jobs and careers are going in our region. Um, our CT programs in Pittsburgh Public Schools really jumpstarts a careers opportunity. Um, they also provide students with industry certifications. Not only that, but they work on state-of-the-art equipment um, every day in their labs, and they also are earning post-secondary credits while they're in the programs. And this is all before graduation. 
Our students are also learning 21st century skills, which will prepare them to meet the region's workforce needs. Um, and all of these skills are also transferable. Things are gonna be very mobile as we move through um, the careers as we're moving um, on. I'd also like to salute PPS students that are here today in health careers and also our auto tech programs. I wanna recognize also um, our teachers that are here and all of our CTE teachers in the district. We also um, have with us today um, some of our industry partners, so we can't do it alone. When students come out of programs, they also have to be prepared and have a connection with industry. And we thank our partners. A couple of them are here today. Um, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, Steve Amati and also Mr. John Poutier from the Pittsburgh Automotive Dealers Association. If you guys could just wave so they can see you. And then we also have with us Tanya Yorich from Presbyterian Senior Care Network. And we also have our PFT president, Nina Esposito, and where is, oh, and there's Billy Howman. Thank you for coming. And we also have one of our board of directors, Maura Collada, who supports CT. Thank you for being here today and our entire board of directors. Also, we want to thank um, Superintendent Hamlet, who's not able to be here today, but is here in spirit. Um, so we thank him also for his support, and we couldn't do it without the support of our superintendent also in our board of directors. Um, we are an integral part of Pittsburgh Public Schools, preparing students for college, career, and life. So again, I'd like to thank City Council for having us here today. Thank you. Good. Go around the other way. <laughs> Why don't you? I think. Yeah, let the kids say who they are. Okay. If all the students would mind, just introduce yourself. What school you are and yeah. what school you go to. We can start here. I'm Candice. Hi, everybody. I go to Westinghouse. I'm Ellie, I go to Westinghouse. I'm Chanel, I go to Westinghouse. I'm Sharon, I go to Westinghouse. I'm Sine, I go to Pratt. I'm Omoni, I go to Westinghouse. I'm Zaira, I go to Westinghouse. I'm Isis, I go to Westinghouse. I'm Layla, I go to Westinghouse. I'm Steven, I go to Brashear. Michael, I go to Brashear. I'm Daniel, I go to Brashear. I'm Luciano, I go to Brashear. I'm Matthew, I go to Brashear. I'm Jay. I'm Brandon, I go to Brashear. I'm Nathan, I go to Brashear. I'm Frank, and I go to Brashear. I'm Jacob, and I go to Brashear. I'm Jose, I go to John A. Brashear. I'm Steve, I go to Brashear. I'm Amoni, I go to Brashear. I'm Andrew, I go to, <coughs> I go to Brashear. I'm Nathan, I go to Brashear. I'm Christian, I also go to Brashear. I'm Javel, I go to Westinghouse. Yep. Teachers? <laughs> Steven Sumetz, I teach automotive tech at Brashear. I'm Robin Campbell. I teach health careers technology at Westinghouse. Everybody? Yeah. Good. Good. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm going to let one of the students hold the proclamation. Does any of the Brashear okay. students have Miss Lee? Anybody from Brashear have Miss Lee? No? All right, just checking. Okay, thanks, everybody. <laughs> That's my son.
Elon's fiance. She's a teacher of Brazil. I don't know. Her name, her name is Jordan Lee. They're getting married in June. Well, I'm getting old. Good to have you. Congratulations, kids. If I could now have um, Ralph Watson and all your invited guests, please come forward. Feel free to stand on the steps, come all the way over. So before I read the plaque, I simply want to thank you all for being here today. Thank you all for what you've done for enhance our community and our city. And I apologize if I mess up anyone's name. It's certainly not my intent. Whereas Ralph P. Watson stepped from public life to create classic events, public relations, marketing, due to recognizing the need to provide platform for businesses, business development and belief that small business is the foundation of our local economy. Whereas coupled with hosting a trilogy of market specific events that forge relationships and power underserved segments of our community, educating and informing our region of the goods and services offered through the execution of entrepreneurs. These effective direct marketing network platforms further create access and exposure for business owners that create wealth and enhance socioeconomic developments of our region. Whereas expressions of arts and culture are elements that remain a strong part of the black experience. It is the fabric of every community, family reference, and memory. <clears throat> Excuse me. On February 16, 2019, Classic Events' 8th Annual Black History Celebration Heritage Dinner at the Durant Excretion Center in the Historic Hill District will occur. The theme of this Black History Celebration event gives tribute to art and culture. It is with pride that Classic Events will bestow this prestigious recognition and award to a diverse group of multi-talented individuals who are industrious entrepreneurs with extraordinary gifts in areas of, but not limited to, art, culture, community, education, and faith. The recipients include Reverend Mary Beasley, Desi Bay, Ernest Bay, Gail Brown, Kevin Brown, Dwayne Chandler, German D. Cisco, Nick Daniels, Dwayne Dolphin, Kim L., John Hubby, Roger Humphrey Sr., Reverend Andrew V. Jackson, Reverend Helen M. Jackson, Rico Martello, Alexander Nick Nichols, Donald Patterson, Aaron Perley, Gregory Roos, Nia Sue, Reverend Denise Walker, Cheryl L. Walker, and James Wimberly. And whereas classic events will also recognize Dr. Quentin B. Bullock, president of Community College of Allegheny College, the, the Excellence of Education Award. Lee Davis of Lee Davis and Associates, LLC, the 2019 Business Vanguard Award. Playwright Mark Clayton Southers, founder of Pittsburgh Playwrights Theater, will be given the Outstanding Playwright Director Award. And Janice Burley Wilson of the August Wilson African American Cultural Center will receive the 2019 Curator of Art and Culture Award. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby recognize artistic, social, cultural, and humanitarian efforts of these unique individuals in their craft. 
Can I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Happy Black History Month. You too. <laughs> Let me begin once again by thanking the members of council, the mayor of the city of Pittsburgh, but more specifically, my friend and colleague here, Councilman Daniel Lavelle. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Councilman Lavelle exemplifies public s service as well as the support of entrepreneurs. My tagline is increasing your network increases your net worth. And you truly exemplify that. And I thank you again. Thank you. That's great. Now, we've got such an eclectic mix of talent to my left. Everybody's not here. This is going to be a huge event. And I'm so honored, elated, over the moon, excited, whatever else I can think of to recognize these people because they do so much in our communities. We recognize individuals in the field of um, education, faith, community service. And I'm just very appreciative. Um, I wanna ask anybody, I don't wanna take a lot of time. Does anybody wanna say anything? I'll pass the mic, but we are gonna end with, on a very special note with a piece of poetry from Desi Bay who will be receiving the Poetry oh. Award from Classic Events. But does anybody want to say anything? Pass around. Pass around. Let them Introduce all. yourselves. At least give their name. Desi Bay Poet. Reverend Mary Beasley. Dwayne Chandler. Gail Ross Brown of Fresh Anointing. Camille Playwright. Cheryl L. Walker, costume designer, makeup artist. Calvin Stemley, musician in support of this gentleman, Mr. Alexander Nichols. <laughs> Alexander Nichols. John Hobby Jr. Greg Rouse of CNR Sound. Jermaine Sisko of CNR Sound. Janice Burley Wilson, August Wilson Cultural Center. James Wimberley of Gospel, Gospel Ministry, Fresh Anointing. Reverend Denise Walker, the founder of Fresh Anointing. Ernest Bay, artist, activist with Mad Dads of Greater Pittsburgh and also Coalition Against Violence. Pastor Andrew Jackson from the Great Webster Avenue Christian Missionary Alliance Church. <laughs> Reverend Helen Jackson, Community Ministry, the Great Webster Avenue Christian Missionary Alliance Church. <laughs> See? Oh, there are people on the side here? No, these people are going to come up for photos. Of all, all of our guests, I will ask them to come up for photos, and I appreciate all of you taking time off your busy schedules to come and support your friends and family. But as I told you all, we've got such an eclectic mix of talent right here to my left. But um, we're going to close this segment with a, uh, a poem from Desi Bay. Thank you very much. Greetings, everyone. Um, the poem I'm about to share with you, I have edited it, but it's called the Civil Rights Movement. It's the reason why we can stand here today. Um, some of us lived through it. Some of us participated in it. And it's also in my book, Know Thyself, an African-American poetic journey. So if you like this piece, see me. I have books with me. <laughs> Couldn't let that go. The year is. 1954. The Supreme Court Justice rules Topeka, Kansas, Brown versus Education Board. The NAACP Thurgood Marshall was the chosen to open this door. In segregation, integrate education, the first step to eradicate the ingrained mental plantation. But Mississippi, God's forsaken land, you gotta let a black boy grow up to be a man. Innocent as can be, Emmett Till, 14-year-old northern city boy who thought he was free, thought it not a crime to admire, whistle, and see, no harm to suggest. He was beaten merciless, brains blown out literally, castrated, and thrown in the river Tallahatchie. Hmm. 
1955. Ms. Rosa took her seat, not in the colored section, but up front with the uncolored elite, defying Southern custom, arrested, cuffed, shackled feet, jailed, because to the back of the bus, she would not retreat. But you know, to everything, to everything there is a season. James Meredith, 1961, enrolled in the University of Mississippi, God's forsaken land. You gotta let a black man be human. President Kennedy ordered the troops to stop the fighting, the riots, and the killing again. Martin Luther King drops a line in the mail while locked down in Alabama's Birmingham jail, and the contents do tell. You have to disobey unjust laws for justice to indeed prevail. Brutality on peace and just us. Eugene Bull Connors commits inhumane acts. Fire hosing, billy sticking, dog sticking, nonviolent activists caught by TV cameras. He could not deny these facts. The tumultuous 60s. Two time hung jury. Mississippi set back with free. 30 year delayed murder conviction. A little late justice for Medgar Evers of the NAACP. Don't you agree? But there's a time. There's a time to every purpose under heaven. 1963, King's dream verbalized. 20,000 strong march on Washington, D.C. for civil rights to be realized. A time, a time to mourn. Damn Birmingham, 16th Street Baptist Church bombed. Four little Negro girls killed, dead at the hands of the Ku Klux Klan. 1964, a sane mind can't take much more. President Johnson signs the Civil Rights Act, prohibits unjust laws that discriminate national origin, religion, race, and color is no reason to project racist hate. But then again, Mississippi, goddamn. Cheney, Swerner, Goodman, bodies found after police released these freedom riders into the hands of the Ku Klux Klan. 1965, the man who made men out of all black men, Malcolm X, shot dead. By his own people, it is rumored, it is said, too much power for one black man to retain. Malcolm made the lowest black man feel humane. 1966, all power to the people. The Black Panther Party for Self-Defense makes the scene. Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seale are the founders of this courageous, self-sufficient militant team. A time, a time to die. 1968, the king assassinated. H. Rap Brown coins burn, baby burn. Fires, riot, destruction, devastation in our neighborhoods at every turn. Mm. Music reflects the times. Say it loud, James Brown shout. Black power, black power, is Stokely Carmichael's scream, AKA Kwame Ture, Pan-Africanism was his ways and means. Civil Rights Act of 1968, again, attempts to prohibit hate, eliminate institutionalized racism in the sale of houses, rental properties, and real estate. 1970s. The 1970s, black folks fall. We fall prey to good drugs, good music, and just a grand old good time. Black folks blindsided by the illusion of inclusion. 1988, Civil Rights Restoration Act and the Civil Rights Act of 1991 both admonished the education system and big corporations receiving big federal money discriminatory practices against all people of color and homosexuals, the new minority. <laughs> a time, a time to weep. 1992, can't we all just get along? Rodney mm -hmm. King, be close to death by LAPD, four white cops acquitted, deja vu, as seen on TV, and the blood, the blood is in the streets. The blood is in the streets. Johnny Gamage, 1995. Amadou Diallo, 1999. Little Michael Ellerby, 2002. Sean Bell, 2006. 2010? 2010. Guess what? Jordan Miles, 
lives to tell the story. We the people, we the people have got to take a stand. Stand for right, for human rights. Be the light before this purgatory becomes a civil righteous hell. Moving on, moving on, on the move and we shall overcome someday. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to take a couple of group photographs and then the guests can come up. Then we're going to go out in the hall. Uh, if, if we can move quickly, all the guests can start to come forward. The guests are with classic events and we can move real quickly. And then uh, we can go out in, in the hall and finish our photos. Of course. I love that color. That's a beautiful. Thank you. Sir, you look 
So not yet. So sanctioned area. So if all those here for the Association of the Study of African American Life, please come forward. Oh, yeah, I got one. So, and I'm going to, please come all the way over. And I'm going to make sure that each one of you also have the opportunity to Absolutely. introduce yourselves. Absolutely. Um, because we have some actually very extraordinary people with us this morning. Whereas Dr. Carter G. Woodson founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, now called the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. And whereas under Woodson's pioneering leadership, the association created research and publication outlets for black scholars through the establishment of the Journal of Negro History in 1916 and the Negro History Bulletin in 1937. Whereas in 1926, Dr. Woodson initiated the celebration of Negro History Week to correspond with the birthdays of Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln, which was later expanded to include the entire month of February for people of all ethnic and social backgrounds to discuss the black experience. Whereas Dr. Etna B. McKenzie Branch of Asala in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. is working to preserve Dr. Woodson's legacy and legacy of other early African American advocates, including working with the downtown business branch Carnegie Library to present a program on black migrations on February 2nd and February 16th, 2019. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby commend the late Dr. Woodson and the Dr. Etna B. McKenzie Branch for their work they have done to promote, re research, preserve, interpret, and disseminate information about black life, history, and culture to the global community, especially in the creation of Black History Month. President. May I have a motion and a second, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Some work. I want to thank Councilman Lavelle and all the city councilmen here today. We're very grateful and honored to be accepted this particular award, at, specifically at a time in American history where we commemorate 400 years of African Americans in the English colony of America. This is our 400 year commemoration anniversary. And how fitting that we have folks here representing the organization that founded Black History Month by Dr. Carter G. Woodson in 1915. This is why we celebrate this month each year because of his hard, like steadfast, relentless work. We have a few titans up here. One, and I'll let her speak, but I just want to let you know, this young lady here, Martha Richards Conley, was the first black woman in Allegheny County to get a law license to practice law. She was also the first African-American female to graduate from the University of Pittsburgh School of Law. Let's give her a big round of applause. <laughs> Secondly, I don't want to do all the talking. I'll let folks talk for themselves. Next up, I'll have Mrs. Marlene Branson, and she can speak about who she is and what she represents. Thank you. Good morning. I again like to thank the council for giving us this proclamation today. 
Um, as said, my name is Marlene Bransom. I am the president of the Afro-American Historical and Genealogical Society of Pittsburgh. We've been in existence since 1991, mm. and we preserve the history and culture of African Americans in the city of Pittsburgh and around the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Ann Mason. I am a life member of Asala and was the volunteer coordinator of the African Asala Convention here in 2012 when our branch was officially chartered. And currently I'm the vice president and also the treasurer. Thank you. Thank you very much for this honor. I'm a uh, member of the Asala and also a member of IVW Local Youth Number 5. Yo! And uh, I'm proud to be here and to uh, accept this honor today. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. My name is Betty Pickett, and I am the uh, former director of the National Conference for Christians and Jews, renamed National Conference for Community and Justice. When we brought together people of diverse uh, backgrounds to sit and talk and find out about each other, since we know very little about each other. But I'm here as a member of ASALA, also as a member of BPEP, also as a member of the Women's Suffrage, which will celebrate its centennial next year. And uh, I just wanted to make sure that black women who fought for suffrage get recognized and promoted to uh, the kind of history that we have contributed to throughout the, uh, ever since we got started, we've been part of this process. And so we don't want any piece of it to get left out. And I want to thank City Council for, and Councilman Lavelle, for allowing us to have this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Forgot to mention, I am the president, Dr. Edna B. McKenzie chapter. Also, in, in so far as uh, Councilman Lavelle, I grew up on the hill with his father. We went to the same school, St. Camp Conaqui. We went to the same YMCA, and we still remain friends to this day. So I'm very indebted and grateful to this brother here who's doing a, a yeoman-like duty on council here. Thank you. We're very honored. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, hey, Councilwoman Harris, I understand you have a very special guest here this morning. Very special. Mr. Martin and your guests, come on down. Okay, Mr. Entertainment, you're here. I'm here. <laughs> it's great. Uh, we had a celebration at the Elks on the 2nd. And this gentleman just turned. Oh, well, they, they leave us. Okay. Okay. You have it? Yeah. No, no, I'll just talk to the chairman. Right. He's my. But uh, he's just turned 91 years old. And we celebrated down the Elks. He's known me for over 50 years. Uh, and he served, he got the 91 drinks 
in about an hour and a half. Right. And then he went even further serving drinks all night. It was, oh yeah, not drinking, wow. serving, serving. I can't drink with him if he's going to drink 91 drinks. So I gave him this proclamation down there, but I said, you come down with a council member so they can see you. Uh, and, and this proclamation reads, whereas George, Mr. Entertainment Martin, was born in Millville on February 2nd, into a family of six brothers and sisters. George has been a long time resident and small business owner uh, of Pittsburgh's North Side. Uh, he also spent 68 years as a member of Allegheny uh, Lodge of the Elks 339. And whereas George has been always an involved in entertainment, from music to theater. During his service in the U.S. Army, George welded up a trump instead of a weapon. Uh, he uh, has always been an avid showman. And whereas George has spent two years at Carnegie Tech, and upon his graduation, he worked as an independent designer. He sensed the fashion later led him in the men's furnishing department of Kaufman's downtown. And whereas George has left his job at Kaufman's when Macy's came in, uh, when he realized the passion for owning bars, where he could entertain his patrons at both uh, host and George has experienced very successful uh, three bars he owned in his lifetime. But he also continued to bartend at the Elks Lodge, where he has volunteered as a bar member, bartender since the 60s. And whereas he continues to pull a regular shift at the Elks on most Fridays and Saturdays, making him likely the oldest regular scheduled bartender in Pittsburgh. And whereas George is currently the chaplain of the Allegheny Elks uh, and past exalted roar, roar. That's, that's equivalent to president. Uh, but early years, we used to call him the Grand Pooba. <laughs> Remember from the Flintstones? Yes. <laughs> okay. And he sent he spent four decades as an entertainment chairman. Uh, he booked concerts, shows for the Lodge members, adding further reason for his name to be Mr. Entertainment. And whereas on February 2nd, 2019, George celebrated by tending bar at the Lodge on his 91st birthday. George's goal was to, during that celebration to serve 91 drinks uh, for each year of George's life thus far and celebrate a large crowd at the Elks members, guests, family, friends, and well-wishers. Uh, God bless America was led by, by George. That is his favorite song. God bless America. Mm. We sang it twice that night. Oh, we're and we're going to sing it today, so be ready. <laughs> George was a wonderful performer multiple times. And whereas George's new birthday tradition will be to ten bar at the Allegheny Elks Lodge 339, every year and for his birthday, serving as many drinks 
as the number of years he has lived, uh, and this is his long time task. And now therefore be it resolved that the council of the city of Pittsburgh hereby uh, commends George Martin for his many years of dedication to entertainment and happiness of customers and fellow Elks. The Council of the City of Pittsburgh looks forward to future celebrations of George, Mr. Entertainment Martin, birthdays, and wish him many, many more years of happiness doing what he loves to do. And be it further resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh declare Saturday, February 2nd to Saturday, February 9th to be George Martin's week, George Mr. Entertainment Martin's week in the City of Pittsburgh. May I have a motion and a second, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Happy birthday, George. from the heart. Okay, but the thing is, it's on TV. It's on, on, on television. They won't be able to hear Oh, okay. 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 Go okay. Out there. okay. Mr. President, <clears throat> members of City Council, and guests who are with us today. Usually I speak before an audience, but evidently, uh, they were here and they left. But I'm going to do this. I'm going to ask you one question. One question. Pay attention. Do I look like I'm 91 years old? No. Do I look like I'm 91? Let no. me hear you. I what? Well, I'll tell you, I don't feel 91. And all I do is go by what the Lord tells me. I asked him in my prayers one night if he would give me 10 more years. 10 more years, I'd be happy. Having said all that, I just want to do this. We're going to do something that I did a year ago with you. I believe that I should do it again. But before I do that, I would like members of my group here, my daughter, my friends from the Elks, Joe, Joe, Frank, to come up and say a few words. I just want to say love you, Daddy. Here's a hug. Hi, I'm Joe Brown. I'm from Allegheny Elks Lodge 339. No, I'll stay right here. And I just want to say that uh, George Martin, I'm honored to be here today to celebrate his 91st birthday. I was here last year, and I'm hoping to come back many, many years after. George is a good man. He's, a, uh, he's our best bartender. He's the youngest bartender. No. <laughs> and he moves very well. <laughs> Yay. Hi, my name's Joe Campisi. I met George 42 years ago when I joined the Elks, and it was my honor on Saturday to help him reach his goal of serving 91 drinks. I believe I was number 23, 37, 48, 75. <laughs> well, I did my duty to try and help him out, and I uh, hope to see him again next year. Hello, my name is Frank Ranza. I'm also an Elk member of 16 years. I'm also the cook. Uh, one of all of George's many, many accomplishments, we ignored the latest one he has. Every Friday during Lent, we have a fish fry. And George is our exclusive maitre d'. He will seat you if you show up. So come on down, have a fish sandwich, and George will be more than happy to find you a chair. Thank you. Darlene, I want to say, give you a special thank you for what you've done over the years for me. And uh, I've been honored 
to have you as my friend. To each and every one of you now, it's time that we rise in our place. Stand up, please. I do this because I like each and every one of you. We love our country. And so therefore, all the meetings we, we close over with the Elks, we always end up with singing one verse of God, God bless America. Now, in doing that, I do it in the key of G. I do it on the count of three. Mr. President? Yes, sir. Are we ready? We're ready. Okay. One, two, three. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the ocean, white with foam. God bless America, my home street home. Here we go now. God bless America, my home street home. Thank you all. Thank you for having me. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Hi, thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, uh huh. Let's do it now, but just hold for a second. Thanks, George. Day. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, just one more second. We'll do the Councilman Small Games of Chance first, and then we're going to do the Will of Council. Okay. We have a Small Games of Chance to be presented by Councilman O'Connor. We may, Madam Clerk. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby recognize the Spartan Community Center of Hazelwood, Inc. as a civic and service organization within the appropriate context of the Pennsylvania Small Games of, Ch Small Games of Chance Act as amended, amended. And this is sponsored by Councilman Corey O'Connor. We have a motion and a second, please. I'll move. Second. 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 Do we have discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed abstentions? 
Will a council, or I'm sorry, small games of chance passes unanimously. Then Councilwoman uh, Strasberger and myself, we have a will of council. If I could ask Madam Clerk, if you would please read the first two and the last two paragraphs. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. This is sponsored by Council President Bruce Krause and Councilwoman Erica Strasberger. Whereas the Child Citizenship Act of 2000 aimed to provide equal treatment under United States law for adopted and biological children by granting citizenship to internationally born adoptees. However, when the act became law, it did not apply to intentionally born adoptees who were already over the age of 18, those with legal adoptions who entered on visas requiring a secondary re-adoption in the United States and those who were adopted legally abroad or in the U.S. by U.S. citizens but entered the U.S. on non-immigrant visas. And whereas, as a result, an estimated 49,000 adult legal adoptees of U.S. citizens who were born before February 27, 1982 and raised in the United States are not U.S. citizens are potentially undocumented and further subject to possible deportation. These adoptees' parents did not complete necessary processes to finalize their adopted child or children's citizenship, or in many cases, even a green card. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby urge President Donald J. Trump, the United States Senate, and the United States Congress to enact legislation securing the citizenship of all internationally adopted adult and minor individuals and be it further resolved that a copy of this will of counsel shall be sent to President Donald J. Trump, United States Senators Bob Casey Jr. and Pat Toomey, and the Allegheny County Delegation of the United States House of Representatives. Thank you, Madam Clerk. May I please have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Second. Do we have discussion on the will of counsel? We have, do you, Councilwoman? No. no. I, I'm sorry, I, I thought I saw you I, I, I do want to say something. Mm -hmm. I, you know, this, um, I'm just very grateful to Anne um, for, for bringing this to our attention. Um, this impacts 49,000 adult legal adoptees, people who have come here legally, um, who are adopted into the country from overseas. And, you know, it spoke to me because it was, it impacts people I grew up with, potentially. Um, you know, I, it, for those who were turning 18 in the year 2000, like myself, but were adopted um, from overseas or internationally, um, they could unknowingly be um, here <laughs> in the United States, not, not, not as citizens, and be um, considered to be undocumented. And, um, you know, so, so the fact that um, we have advocates who are making people aware of this and working um, not just at city council level, but at a, on a bipartisan level, um, at, at Congress, in Congress, to um, to rectify this is important, and so I'm, I'm glad that um, President Krauss was able to bring this to my attention, and that I was able to co-sponsor this with him. Thank you, Councilwoman, for your work. Councilwoman Kel Smith. I just want to thank you for um, bringing this to our attention. It's not something I was aware of, but and I would say that um, you know, having watched children um, that are natural born citizens in the United States age out of the system at the age of 18, it really um, I really got to watch some really painful stories and some really painful um, experiences with some of the girls. You know, I coached the Langley cheerleaders and worked at Langley years ago. Um, I watched kids age out of the system with absolutely no help at the age of 18. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's, it actually, this should bring a spotlight onto all those cases, you know, um, all the challenges um, that adoptive uh, children and their families face. Um, throughout the throughout the entire country, whether they're natural born citizens or they're immigrants or bought here um, for adoption, I just think that it, there's just something so painful about watching that that kids that already needed somebody and needed some place to go and needed help and needed a family are now all of a sudden aged out of a system and not mm -hmm. eligible for, for, for much help. And so I just, and there's not much guidance, I can tell you that, because I had to find a lot of it. And thankfully, at the time, the Hill House had the most of the information that I could find. But um, it was difficult to find that information. So I just want to say I think it's a problem um, in terms of adoption in general and, and some of the challenges you know, our, fam our family and those adoptees face. Thanks, Thanks Councilwoman. Uh, we do have Ann Martin Montgomery from the uh, Adoptees' Rights Campaign here with us, and she'll be making comment at public comment here shortly uh, to speak uh, to the Will of Council. So with that, may I take the vote? All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed abstentions. Unanimously uh, voted through. Thank you very much. That will conclude the proclamation portion of the uh, of our council meeting and take us into public comment. And if you'd like to join us, uh, anyone wishing to speak before city council, of course, will have three minutes in which to do so. I would like to remind everyone that the rules of council state that comment is limited to matters of concern, uh, official action or deliberation, which are at this council before this council at this time, or could come before us at another time. Profanity is not permitted and we will maintain order at all times. We ask that you would please begin uh, with your name and the neighborhood in which you reside for our public record. The green light will indicate the start of your three minutes. When the yellow light comes on, you'll have one minute to summarize your thoughts. When the red light comes on, your time has expired. Good morning, Dr. Miller. Dr. Ronald and Miller, Bell Hoover in Lawrenceville, Global Intelligence Society candidate for president 2020, American Chemical Society, Division of Nuclear Chemistry, and a member of the African Studies Association in the United States. Uh, Japan, Nihon, is uh, our ally. Uh, Dume, uh, Koku. China is not. Japan is a democracy. China, not. Mr. Krauss, uh, what do you and the Pittsburgh City Council mean by profanity? Yes. Citizens, the public record now shows that the president of Pittsburgh City Council and council present in this room refused to define a word or expression which is, it prohibits in public comment. Profanity. Mr. Krauss, what is an example of profanity? Citizens, the visual and lexical public record is council refusal to exemplify profanity. I protest. I and the GIS, the Global Intelligence Society in Pittsburgh, can find no precedent in USA local, state, or national laws in which a prohibition is not defined and no example provided of the prohibited act. I and the GIS can find no precedent in local, state, or federal law justifying civil or criminal enforcement of a prohibited act without its definition or exemplification, as every police officer in this city knows. I and the Global Intelligence Society view prohibition of profanity in Pittsburgh City Council, public comment to be invalid and unenforceable. I and the GIS assert that the profanity prohibition is illegal and any attempt to enforce it is itself illegal. I and the GIS argue that the prohibition is unconstitutional and any attempt to enforce it. If a citizen should use a word or expression that the president of Pittsburgh City Council, Mr. Krauss, decides arbitrarily, dictatorially in my view, is profane, it could be anything. It is a violation of the U.S. Pennsylvania Pittsburgh civil rights of that individual using the word or expression. Under the free speech clause of the Constitution of the United States Amendment 1, at the very heart of U.S. American and Nihonjin Minchushugi, I and the GIS are referring this anti-democratic constriction of public comment, freedom of speech by Mr. Krauss and all other Pittsburgh City District representatives who collude with this without dissent uh, to the Pittsburgh Human Relations Commission, the PA Human Relations Commission, and the U.S. Civil Rights Commission. And we are distributing co copies of this public comment, the rules of counsel, and the Home Rule Charter, beginning with District 3 and District 7. Thanks, Dr. Miller. And good morning. Good morning. On behalf of the Adoptee Rights Campaign, I would like to sincerely thank the Pittsburgh City Council for your will of counsel in support of basic citizenship rights for all children of U.S. citizens. And I would like to also point out that Pennsylvania was first in the nation to pass a resolution in Philadelphia. We are now first again in the nation to have passed resolutions or will of counsel in two cities. So we encourage you to please help us by reaching out to your state representatives and senators to ask them to pass a resolution in support of this federal legislation in the Pennsylvania legislature. Under current law, children adopted by U.S. citizens from overseas 
are deprived of the most fundamental right other children receive by virtue of their birth, the right to citizenship. Although many parents and adopted children are unaware, the legal process of international adoption on its own does not confer the right to citizenship. A partial remedy was applied with the Child Citizenship Act of 2000, but it did not apply to all children. It excluded three groups, as you mentioned in your will of counsel so eloquently. And history has demonstrated that not all adoptive parents are knowledgeable or even willing to undergo the processes necessary to secure this core protection for their children. The US government does not maintain accurate figures on the citizenship status of children that they allow to enter the United States for the purpose of adoption by US citizens. The Adoptee Rights Campaign has created the first estimates, which were just recognized by the US Department of State through the media that we learned on Friday with a new story done by ABC in California. Adoption is a legal process involving multiple US and international government agencies. Children entering the US as adoptees undergo the most thorough process of any immigrant, yet adoption in our country is fatally compromised. The purpose of adoption is a safe, secure, permanent placement for the entire life of the child, and we are not providing that. There is no permanency in adoption without the guarantee of citizenship. If we as a country are to sanction the practice of international adoption, if adoption is to function as intended, it must operate on a sound legal basis that guarantees the safety and security of every child, no exceptions. It is unconscionable, unethical, and un-American to continue in this way. How many US children must be deported, live in fear, or take their own lives as our own Pennsylvania adoptee, Philip Clay did? before Congress is going to guarantee equal protection privileges under the law to all children of US citizens, whether they join their families through birth or through adoption. If passed, a broad and inclusive Adoptee Citizenship Act should fulfill the promise of adoption and place all internationally adopted children on the same legal footing. Thank you very much on behalf of the Adoptee Citizenship. Thank you, Anne. Thank you very campaign. much for your remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Ms. Brown, good morning. Welcome. Um, my name is Yvonne Brown. I live in the Hill District, and I have quite a few things to say, and I just want to, I'm going to do it fast. This is my grandbaby. Uh, this is the little one that's four years old. Now, th this is Alexis. Okay, I have another one that's five. The little dark one, today's her birthday. I didn't bring her down. You know why? I'm not going to have you hollering at me in front of my grandkids again. And they wanted to come. See, I want to show you this picture. This was years ago that Cross was hollering at me. Now, this little one is three now, four now. Was hollering at me. And, some, and the kids, I told you, my grandkids watch this program. They know I'm supposed to be able to speak. So they said, oh, he's hollering at grandma. My grandbaby was crying. She's scared. She's one of the little ones that came in here with me that I was chased out when I was supposed to have three minutes. And my baby spoke. And they gave me a minute and 30 seconds. And he chased me out again with this baby. I heard Mr. Lavelle say, thank you for treating my children so well. What's the difference? Why can your children, who are older and can understand, because you see that baby, your son understands about these big guns. My baby don't understand if you treat Miss B-Maw, B-Maw of all people, baby. Now, here's another thing I wanted to say. This is for Chris Moore. Chris Moore, my other brother, I just found out that you were under the weather. I heard that you are much better. You could have knocked me over with a feather when I turned on KKA to listen to her brother and I heard them others. My heart began to shatter. They finally got rid of the brother. My heart skipped a beat um, and my fear did retreat when I found out you'll be coming back next week. I want to say to, to Chris Moore, when you walk through that door, we thank you because you're the voice for many people that cannot speak for themselves. They will not let us speak, but you do. He speaks for us all. The difference between you and him is that he'll let you speak, but you 
especially with you, Mr. Krause, and I'll never forgive you for the way you treated me in front of my grandchildren. I teach my grandchildren love, love, love. And you're teaching them that you can holler at me and have the police chase me out of here? You're going to answer for it because you know what? God is my witness, and I don't use his name in vain. I'm going to sue you. I'm suing city council because not one of you will ever take up from me. I know you can do it because Jim Furlow, when he was here, he took up from me. Thank okay, you. thank you, Ms. Brown. Are there any further speakers this morning that wish to speak before city council? Any further speakers? Okay, seeing no further speakers, we'll move on to the presentation of papers. Our first committee of the morning is our Committee of Finance and Law, and our chair is Councilman Burgess. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Reverend Burgess presents Bill Number 1344, Resolution Authorizing the Mayor and the Bureau of Neighborhood Empowerment to execute relevant agreement to receive grant funding from the Benter Foundation. This funding will support the Imagination Library Program for the City of Pittsburgh through the Dollywood Foundation, providing for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $250,000 for this stated purpose. Bill number 1345, ordinance amending and supplementing the Pittsburgh City Code at Title II, Fiscal Article 9, Property Taxes, Exemption for Industrial and Commercial Improvement, Exemption Schedule, Subsection E, to include applications filed during the period of June 30th, 2017, until legislation establishing a new program has been adopted or the program is terminated. Bill number 1346, resolution authorizing issuance of a warrant in the amount of $4,565 in favor of Daniel Bendis for damage to the sidewalk and driveway of his resident from a city PW high lift removing ice buildup from the PWSA water main break on January 3rd, 2018. Bill number 1347, resolution providing for an agreement for payment of the city's share of the 2019 operating expenses to the Allegheny County Central Tax Collection District for tax collection, cost not to exceed $8,065.51. Bill number 1356, resolution amending resolution number 863, by reducing Beckford Dwelling's Choice Neighborhood by $1,500 and increasing economic development and housing by $1,500, I'm sorry, this is $1,500,000 and increasing economic development and housing by $1,500,000. Bill number 1357, resolution amending resolution 532, authorizing the mayor and director of finance to enter into a contract or agreement on behalf of the city with the Pittsburgh Land Bank for administrative service for the 2018 Land Bank implementation at a cost not to exceed $200,000 in order to allow expenditures in 2019. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman Coghill, our Chair of Urban Recreation. I'm sorry? No, we're good. No, we're good, right? Good morning. Yep, thank you, Councilman. Councilman Coghill presents Bill Number 1348, Resolution Amending Resolution Number 444. The City's Department of Park and Recreation now seek to rename the Special Summer Food Service Trust Fund as a Special Food Service Programs Trust Fund in order to reflect that additional food service programming is conducted throughout the school year and not merely the summer. Bill number 1349, resolution authorizing the Director of Department of Parks and Recreation and or the Director of the Department of Public Safety and Director of the Office of Management and Budget to enter into an agreement in individual amount of $10,000 or less with performers, instructors, artists, referees, and persons with specialized skill in connection with the department's recreational and instructional programs and special event services. Bill number 1350, resolution providing for an agreement and or license agreement for the use of certain property for senior facilities for the provision of center services to seniors in an amount not to exceed $87,010 chargeable to 
and payable from the Seniors Community Program Trust Fund in the Department of Parks and Recreation. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Gross, our Chair of Land Use and Economic Development. May I have Councilwoman Harris for Councilwoman Gross? Thank you. Thanks, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Gross presents Bill Number 1351. Resolution amending resolution number 503, providing for the implementation of a residential sticker parking program in the Beach View neighborhood pursuant to Pittsburgh Code Chapter 459, so as to amend the streets and remove addresses included in Area T. Bill number 1352, resolution amending resolution number 574, providing for the implementation of a residential sticko parking program in the Squirrel Hill neighborhood pursuant to Pittsburgh Code Chapter 549, 549 so as to amend the streets and remove addresses included in Area K. Bill number 1353, ordinance amending and supplementing the Pittsburgh Code by creating Title 13 entitled Stormwater Management and by deleting Stormwater storm Management text from Title 10, Building Chapter 1003. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Harris, would you make the motion to waive the rules on Bill 1353? Yes, I make a motion to waive the rules on 1353 for Councilwoman Gross. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do I have discussion on the motion to waive the rules? So seeing none, all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed abstentions. Thank you, Councilwoman. Bill 1353 will appear on tomorrow's Standing Committee agenda. Next, we have Councilwoman Harris, our Chair of Human Resources. No new papers, Mr. Cross. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman Lavelle, our Chair of Public Safety Services. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman O'Connor, our Chair of Intergovernmental Affairs. No new papers, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. And Councilwoman Mikhail Smith, our Chair of Public Works Services. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Have a nice day. Councilwoman Kale Smith presents Bill Number 1354, Resolution Vacating a Portion of Dalem Park in the 12th Ward, 9th Council District of the City. Bill Number 1355, Resolution Providing for an Agreement or Use of Existing Agreement to Set Forth Financial Obligations and Maintenance Responsibilities for the Project and the Pedestrian Facilities with PennDOT, Local Costs Associated with Work to be Done on SR0885. ADA ramps and upgraded black traffic signal poles being construction, constructed and inspected by PennDOT and further providing for reimbursement to PennDOT of the cost estimated to be $77,707.50. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Strasburger, our Chair of Innovation, Performance and Asset Management. No new papers, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. The Chair has no new papers. That will take us into unfinished business, and with no unfinished business before the Council, we'll go into reports of committee for final action. We'll begin with our Committee on Finance and Law on our Chairperson, Councilman Burgess. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Reverend Burgess presents Bill Number 1341. Report of the Committee on Finance and Law for January 30th, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 1303, resolution amending resolution number 878, resolution authorizing the fee schedule for 2019, pursuant to chapter 170 of the city code, so as to replace the attached fee schedule and update the effective date. Bill number 1304, resolution amending resolution number 843, providing for the issuance of a warrant in the total sum of $8,000 in favor of Kathleen Kusinick and her attorneys fully releasing the city from all claims and liabilities for alleged property damages as described in the lawsuit filed in the Allegheny County Court of Common Pleas. Bill number 1313, ordinance amending the Pittsburgh Code of Ordinances at Title I Administrative Article 11, Human Resources, Pensions at General Provisions, Section 19201, Definitions, and also at Municipal Benefits Plan number two. Municipal benefits in order to allow interest payments on withdrawals from the Municipal Pension Plan and to authorize the calculation of interest. 
Bill number 1316, resolution providing for a professional services agreement or existing agreement for consulting services, but not limited to auditing, accounting, and technical services for the city controller's office at a cost not to exceed $135,000. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading and the title of these bills under our Committee on Finance and Law. Is there further discussion on any of the bills? Then seeing none, the bills are now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when the names are called. Those opposed will vote no. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Mrs. Kel Smith. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Krause, President. Aye. Ayes 8, no 0. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bill having received then the legally required number of votes are finally passed. Our next committee is our Committee on Public Safety Services. Our chair is Councilman R. Daniel Lavelle. Thank you, Councilman. Men? Councilman Lavelle presents Bill number 1342, Report of the Committee on Public Safety Services for January 30th, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 1308, Resolution Amending Resolution number 231, authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Safety to enter on behalf of the city into an agreement with the Housing Authority of the city for providing for police services at HACP properties over a three-year term in order to update account numbers. Bill number 1310, resolution providing for the issuing of a warrant in favor of Dolan Consulting Group in the amount of $9,950 for verbal de-escalation training for the Department of Public Safety Bureau of Police. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading and the title of these bills under our Public Safety Services Committee. Do we have further discussion on either of the bills? And seeing none, the bills are now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when the names are called. Those opposed will vote no. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Laval. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Mrs. Kel Smith? Aye. Ms. Strasberger? Aye. Mr. Krauss, President? Aye. Ayes 8, no 0. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bills having received then the legally required number of votes are finally passed. Our next committee is our Committee on Public Work Services. Our chairperson is Councilwoman Teresa Kel Smith. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Kel Smith presents Bill number 1343, Report of the Committee on Public Works for January 30th, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 1295, Resolution Amending Resolution number 701, to now read as follow, Resolution Authorizing the Mayor and Director of Mobility and Infrastructure on behalf of the City to enter into an agreement with PennDOT, under which PennDOT will make improvements to and transfer industrial highway approximately 1.2 miles of roadway to the city, and the city will transfer to PennDOT two current city street segments. Those street segments be begin uh, on Euclid Avenue from Bond Boulevard to Center Avenue, approximately 347 feet, and Center Avenue from Euclid Avenue to Highland Avenue, approximately 1,017 feet. Bill number 1312, resolution authorizing the transfer by the city to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, certain public right-of-way and temporary construction easement rights on certain property of the 32nd Ward of the city in cooperation with a PennDOT construction project. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading and the title of these bills under our Public Works uh, Services Committee. Do we have further discussion on any of the bills? Sure, Councilwoman. I just want to um, thank my colleagues for working on us to get the um, Industrial Boulevard, um, that, that legislation through. Uh, Councilwoman Gross isn't here, is she here? No. And so I just want to say that um, you know, she and I had spoken afterwards and we're going to work together on those, the meeting uh, for with PennDOT as we had talked and discussed about all the issues that were challenged with in the city uh, with PennDOT overseeing our you know having a lot of say on, on, on everything sure. transportation and how we can better work together including with our speed limits I think a lot of people think the city of Pittsburgh sets the speed limits on our city streets which would make sense but we don't we're not you know we're not able to do that one so we're not able to say maximum so a lot of our speed our streets are 25 miles an hour and they should be 15 miles an hour um, and we're not able to change that without state approval so I think um, having those conversations are really going to help um, with the quality of life in the city of Pittsburgh, especially in terms of trans, you know, 
transportation and, and uh, traveling. So I just want to say that we are working on that. The Women's Caucus will be working on some things um, in that regard, too. So I just want to say Absolutely. thank everyone for getting this passed while we work on those additional issues. Thank you, additional thank you issues. very much, Councilwoman. Uh, with no further discussion, then, the bills are now ready for final action, and all in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye. When the names are called, those opposed will vote no. And, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Aye. Mrs. Kel Smith. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Krause, President. Aye. Ayes 8, no 0. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bills having received the legally required number of votes are finally passed. Uh, the chair has a few meeting announcements. The council will interview appointees to the Housing Authority, the e Ethics Hearing Board, and the directorship of the Department of Innovation Perf and Performance tomorrow morning, Wednesday, February 6th, before a standing committee meeting. I have asked if we could please begin those interviews at 930 because we have such a, uh, a full agenda of interviews. Immediately following the interviews, then, of course, we'll go into our standing committee meeting. Also, uh, please note that the Cablecast post agenda discussion originally scheduled for this afternoon at 1.30 p.m. on Tree Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy, and the partnerships within the cities has been canceled. Okay. Uh, with that. Uh, can, can I just say that it, it will, it's postponed. We are going to schedule that. We are going sure. to have that, uh, that post agenda. Okay. So we'll with all the that partnerships. being postponed. Uh, if I could indulge the members for just one second before we leave, uh, the uh, Anne wishes that uh, the members of the council would take a photograph with her before uh, she exits. So if we could ask members just stay behind and take the photograph. And then Councilwoman Harris. Yes, I just wanted to talk about another landslide that I had, which really, really disappointed me. And I guess it's because we've lost a number of people that knew what was happening for four, five years ago or so. Um, we had a landslide, a landslide on Sem Semiser Street, which is off Perrysville Avenue, uh, right behind uh, uh, Perry High School. And uh, we had some houses that went down. It's right behind Riverview Park where uh, instead of leaving the trails like the trails were, they wanted to expand them. So, you know, man, man decided to uh, disrupt some ground there. But also they've had some water problems and uh, uh, Jeff had uh, been working uh, with Domi on this project. Um, when I went up there, I was really shocked. Uh, there was a uh, bulldozer taking down another house on that street, and the ripple has gone all the way up to almost 27. So if you tried to, and if you tried to come in, it's a one-way street. If you went the wrong way and came in, you could only go to address 45 and the other way to address 27. Um, it was unbelievable to see that, especially when there should have been something taken care of when this started with the first um, homes uh, uh, basically going over the hill, the sidewalk, the street. Um, I actually went to the paramedic stations and to uh, 34 engine and 38 engine um, to let them know uh, about this because if one of those trucks would have went over where the street is is now impacted by this, uh, they would have a, a real problem. Um, and I still can't understand why nothing was done, you know, when the first houses had the problem. And it's still moving and we're losing, the trees are just falling in Riverview Park. Uh, we've had a number of water leaks 
up on the street to, um, I understand that they just did another geotech study. Uh, and I don't know um, if Domi even has, you know, the geotech studies that were already done on that street five years ago. But the people are really, really upset. I cannot blame them. Um, they knew I was up there when, when this happened a few years back. And to see them having to bulldoze a house down and the other house, it's going to go any time. It's just, you know, all wobbly to go over the hill. And I wish uh, they would find out this time so we don't lose any more houses. We, we don't need, and we didn't need this to happen if they got to find, find, found out the problem and have taken care of when it fell first. But it's impacting Riverview Park and it's impacting these homes of these people, and uh, it shouldn't be. I mean, they should have been doing something years ago. Uh, I am going to call Domi about the street. I have already called uh, PWS or POA, and I'll call PWSA about it. Um, but I also called Chief Jones last night, and he put it at the 911. And uh, he must have called uh, Public Works, too, because they come up and they shut the whole street down. So um, it's really tough on these neighbors once again. Um, they took $3 million out of money that I had to do other projects by this council to get these landslides going. And here's another one that's been just creeping up on the neighbors and boom. Uh, it's very sad and I don't think anyone would like their street like that. So uh, uh, I will be called Domi too. Um, and I just hope that they go out there this time and find out the cause and stop the cause. Uh, Harris, I'd be happy to work with you on this. Thank you so much, Councilman. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank uh, you. With that, may I have a motion to excuse our absent member, approve the minutes, and adjourn our meeting? I move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Would you. Can we collect for the...